Here we go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a brand new sweet film podcast. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Zach. And I'm your other host, and my name is Cody. And we are the sweet film life of Zach and Cody, or the sweet film podcast, the sweet podcast of Zach and Cody, whatever you want to call it. We are here talking about the Oscar nominations. And if you guys are new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and also checking down Sandwich on Films also down below where this podcast is presented by um, Cody, where are Kitten else they can find this? They can find this on iTunes and SoundCloud as well. Yeah. If you guys, if you guys want to check it out, it's pretty much everywhere podcasts are available. But right now, the main three that I know of is SoundCloud, iTunes, and also a little app that you can get on Android and iOS called Podcast Republic. So, nice. so guys, go check it out over there. Uh, if you don't have time to watch it on YouTube, that's totally fine with us. Throw us on the background while you're doing the dirty or something i don't know uh, i mean if they got a long if they got an hour long drive they can pop in one of the or an hour long them. fuck <laughs> that was weird. um today we're going to be discussing the oscar nominations uh they are here they're present they are snubs but uh how me and yeah. Cody are going to go over this is that we are going to go through each category we're not going to discuss every single one because some of these that we can't like best documentary short we can't talk like i haven't watched any of them so how we're going to do it is we're going to discuss some of the films. We're going to go through each category that we know. We're going to give you what's, what got snubbed, what we think should win, what will probably win, and really just the front runner, the second runner, and then the dark horse to win. So we kind of have five things to go through each category. So it's going to be a long ride. Let's get straight to it, Cody. Um, you ready? All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we're starting with visual effects, and the nominations for visual effects were Avengers Infinity War, Christopher Robin, First Man, Ready Player One, and Solo, A Star Wars Story. Did you like all these nominations? Like, did you have any that you're like, wow, that got in? Yeah, well, actually, um, the one that I would say I was a little surprised by was Christopher Robin. Like, I thought the visual effects were amazing, but as far as... That one was a surprise. Like overall, out of everything else, mm -hmm. yeah, it was nice to that, see it get in there. Um, I mean, if I'm to pick one out of here, there, there's a clear snub out of here. Two clear snubs for me personally. Um, that wasn't wasn't even on the visual effects short list to get in, and that was Aquaman. Yep. And um, I'm trying to think of the other one. I'm trying to. Oh, Annihilation. I think those two, hands down, should have been in here. And I would have moved out First Man and Solo. Even though I think Solo... Or not First Man and Solo. I'm sorry. Christopher Robin and Solo I would have moved out. Yeah. Um, even though I think Solo was great. I think at least Aquaman deserved to get in here. At I, least. I, I agree with that. And also, if it wasn't... Um, I would have moved out Christopher Robin and Solo once again for Aquaman. But the other one would have been Bumblebee. Yeah, that's another good one. Because that Bumblebee was really lifelike and the cybertron segment was excellent um it, it really is weird to see that some of these glaring films and like i said aquaman like what but um if we were to choose from these visual effects i have to say i think the clear actual winner for this i i have to go with ready player one i think ready player one's gonna win it yeah okay yes ready player one i think is and that's personally what i would want to win too even though i get avengers made thanos thanos looks real ready player one though is a movie where almost every single part of that film is cgi even the characters yeah very true uh, visual effects are impressive and i mean if it's not ready player one the only other one i would say that i would hope would win would be first man because mm -hmm. damien chazelle successfully and from a first person perspective recreated the moon landing yeah, I'm with you on that. So if I were to put it, I would put Ready Player One number one. I think Avengers number two, because that's kind of like everyone's talking about Thanos' performance. And then the Dark Horse to win is First Man. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Although I would probably put First Man at number two, and it, it's still having it be the Dark Horse to win. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on to the next one is costume design. We have the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Black Good. Panther, The Favorite, Mary Poppins Returns, and Mary Queen of Scots. My personal pick, the favorite. Who I think will win? Probably the favorite or Black Panther. Um, 
Even actually, no, I'm tied. I would actually want the favorite or Black Panther to win. I think it would be awesome if either one of those won. I think it'll go down between one of those two with a dark horse going to Mary Queen of Scots. Um, what about you? Any like so, I don't misses for you? Uh, no, I can't really say I disagree with you because you basically said my thoughts. I would say that I'd put Black Panther, the favorite, and Mary Queen of Scots on the same level only because both Mary Queen of Scots and the favorite are both period pieces mm -hmm. and the Academy loves their period piece outfits. So I think for me, it's either going to be between those two and then Black Panther is going to be the dark horse. Yeah, of and I also have thing. to say, I'm actually like, as much as I didn't love the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, I'm glad to see that it did get some love. Did you watch the film? I did. And you know, it's funny because the ballad of buster shrugs is the is the second film in the oscar nominations that was released by netflix yeah so and, um i i liked it um i didn't get the love for it um there are certain segments in there that i loved and it, it, i do say i need to watch it again because i watched it in theaters and it, it felt is, long absolutely the ballad of buster shrugs look do i think it was the greatest movie in the world no do i think it's an enjoyable movie yes i absolutely do i think it's very creative but more or less yeah i'm just happy that the academy is is actually starting to look at stuff produced in other in other services such as netflix and giving them some attention because there's been some great things released yep i'm with you uh so next one moving up to is makeup and hair uh, oh, the three nominations is Border, Mary Queen of Scots, and Vice. And I want to say this. I wish they did five for this nom. I don't know why they don't. Because I think Suspiria is missing. Yep. Hands down, I think Suspiria still has the best makeup and hair effects of the year. Um, I haven't seen Border, so I can't talk about Border. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots I saw. It's fine. Like, it's cool, I guess. And Vice, I, I understand what Vice got in there. They made him Dick Cheney. But like I said, I... No, Suspiria, like, come on. Yeah, no, um, this is, I mean, this is one of those categories I generally don't really care about, but we all know who it's going to be between. It's going to be between Mary, Queen of Scots, and Vice, and I think that Vice is probably yeah, going to win. Yeah, just kind of how the Darkest, I think Darkest Hour won the same year, right? When Gary Oldman won, so I can kind of see yeah. that happening. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like, I'm glad that they got nominated, but I I don't have much say in it. So, uh, But now we're talking about original song. Um, all the stars from Black Panther, I agree. All fight from RBG, I heard it. It's fine. The place where the lost things go, I like. Shallow, a star is born. And when a cowboy trades his spurs for wings. So can I say this? I'm surprised not more a star is born actually got in here. And I'm actually surprised none of the Spider Verse soundtrack got in here. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, the other one is Revelation from Boy Erased. I'm surprised it's not in here as well. Um, nice surprise to see when a cowboy trains his spurs for wings. I love that song. It was the best segment in the whole film. Yeah, and, I'm just yeah. I'm just a little disappointed. I know that it was it's a film that literally nobody has seen because it was so limited, but I was a little disappointed that none of the songs from Anna and the Apocalypse got in to the nominations because I, the it's, soundtrack again, it's all market. I still haven't even I, seen the film. I know, I know. The marketing is, it, it was so limited and bare, nobody saw the film except for a couple people we know who live around the areas who got to see it. But the soundtrack for, it is all marketing, but the soundtrack for Anna and the Apocalypse is one of the, it's up there with Shallow for me as far as the best soundtrack yeah. of the entire year. I mean, yeah. And for me, I don't have any Dark Horse or anything for that. I, we yeah. Making it, let's be honest. Let's say it, it on three. One, two, three. Shallow. Shallow. Shallow's yeah. taking it home. That's the dark horse. That's what I want to win. That's first. That's second. If Shallow's doesn't win, I'll eat my own shit. <laughs> All right. Just saying. Uh, moving on to original score. And this is the one I'm actually pissed at some stuff in this category. Yeah. We'll get to it. Me uh, too. Original Me too. score, Black Klansman, Black Panther, If Beale Street Could Talk, Isle of Dogs, and Mary Poppins Returns. The biggest, what the fuck? Where the hell is first man? Where the hell is first man? Justin Hurwitz. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is the best score of this year. And if I was going to say that was the best, I'm glad Beale Street got in. And then I'm also glad Black Panther got in. But come on. That score was excellent. The only other score that I would have personally put in here is the Suspiria one. Yes, absolutely. It's just, it's disappointing. 
I mean, Justin Hurwitz, he worked so hard. I mean, all of these composers worked really hard, but the score and soundtrack to First Man is it, it, it shook you as a as a viewer of First Man watching that moon landing. Everything came together perfectly. I'm not saying I'm disappointed. I think that I would Honestly, I would call the Mary Poppins Returns. I would call that a soundtrack. I wouldn't necessarily call it a score because if Mary Poppins Returns got in here, then my biggest what the heck is, where is the score for A Star is Born? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, Star is Born as well, what it should have been in here. I, I Like I said, it is missing. Isle of Dogs was a nice surprise. Um, if I don't know what would be the clear front runner for this one because necessarily – like first man was the front runner all season um but looking at these nominations i think the front runner for me would be if bill street could talk with a second place being isle of dogs and a dark horse being black panther what do you think uh for me uh kind of similar except i think that I think that Black Panther might be at the very top of this, followed by If Beale Street Could Talk, followed by Isle of Dogs. But I was I think, had a really good score. I was actually I, I'm glad he got in. I I think the dark horse for me on this is going to be If Beale Street Could Talk. Cause <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I wish would have gotten in though? What? Incredibles 2. Oh <laughs> yeah. Michael G. Aquino's score is great. It's great. Yeah, it absolutely was. Uh, Let's move moving on. on. To production design. Do you want to read yeah. it? Do you have them up in front of you? Yeah, I certainly okay. do. The Retract. nomination the nominations for production design are Black Panther, First Man, The Favorite, Mary Poppins Returns, and Roma. Honestly, for me, this is what I wanted to get in. This is what I wanted to get nominated. But my personal, what I think is going to win, what my personal choice would be is The Favorite. I think that everything around that film was brilliant. But if I had a... If I had a place for this, it would be favorite first, Roma second, and then a dark horse for first man. Because first man not only looked great as a film, the production design was not only great, the film overall made you feel like you were back during the time period when they were trying to get the first man into space. So, so the yeah, so I'm with you on that. Um, my number one is actually first man. I think first man is going to win it. Okay. Um, actually, and then second being Roma and the dark horse being the favorite. Um, I think it's, I think the favorite will not win that many awards this year, um, for how it has 10 nominations and I don't think it'll win that many. You think um, we're going to be looking at a La La Land situation again? Yeah. In a sense, I think, I think Roma, I think Roma is pretty much going to take a lot of these. Um, yeah. So we'll leave it there, but yeah, th okay. those are kind of my thoughts on it. Um, sound mixing. Okay. Here we go. You want to read this one? Yeah. All right. Sound mixing. We have Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, First Man, Roma, and A Star is Born. Now, we're going to talk about our disappointments when it comes to a certain film on this particular category later on. But I will say, if there is something, well, I guess I'm revealing it here now. If there is one or at least a couple of categories I think Bohemian Rhapsody should have been nominated for, sound mixing is definitely one of them because the sound in Bohemian Rhapsody was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't necessarily think it's going to win this one. For me, I think that First Man is going to is going to take this can I be honest? This uh, category. What? I love you, but you're completely wrong. I think Roma has it. Dude, Do you think Roma's Roma, got it? Roma has some of the best sound I've ever heard in my whole life. Um, I think Roma has it, but but I think the Dark Horse is First Man and Second Place being a Star is Born. Gotcha. So... And if we're going up to sound editing, which is next, it's Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, First Man, A Quiet Place, and Roma. I think that one's Roma's one to win again, um, with the Dark Horse being A Quiet Place, though. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Same thing, or? Yeah, same exact thing. I will say, although I think this is really the only award that it was mentioned for, but A Quiet Place, I'm at least happy that it was nominated for something. Yeah, I mean, it sound, sound is probably the best one that it deserved, but uh, I, I think it's script, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah. I have All a bone right. to pick with this next one. That's for film editing. So when people look at statistics, whatever gets nominated for film editing has probably the best chance of winning. 
I apparently maybe I'm wrong, but I saw someone post that on Twitter. But Twitter isn't the factual thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> the film editing is Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, Green Book, The Favorite, and Vice. I'm gonna tell you right now, three of these films should not be in here. Yeah. Which ones? Bohemian. Yep. Green Book. Definitely. And no, the, just those two. I would have moved um, First Man and Roma in. Okay, completely agree. Completely uh, agree. Here's and, the thing. Uh, I had a blast with Bohemian Rhapsody. It is not not the best editing. Not not uh, the best editing. Okay, I would also um a dark dark horse in here. I would have also made an argument for a quiet place should have gotten yeah, in here. That's another good one. Um and again, like Green Book. I loved Green Book. I get the hate. I'm not arguing about it within the comments. I get the hate for Green Book. I apparently whatever. I like it a lot. And I don't think it deserves a film editing nomination. No, I'm definitely sorry. not. That, like, it's not anything special when it comes to film editing. Um, Vice, great film editing. The favorite, excellent film editing. Black Klansman, great film editing. Um, exactly. I, so personally, my pick for winning this is probably going to be the favorite with an odd shot out for um, the Dark Horse. I don't want to say it, but I think is Green Book. And my uh, second runner is Vice, but my personal pick would probably be the favorite for this one. Yeah, um, I'm with you almost all the way, except uh, for second underneath the favorite, I would actually put Black Klansman. Okay, but, I, that's kind of like one of those two. I think really any of these films could win. If Bohemian Rhapsody wins, though, I whatever you know. Whatever. Yeah. All um, right. Next, you want to read for best foreign film? Well, I, I would, except the only thing is, I, I've only seen one of the films that is on this list. Okay, so I've seen three of them. So All I'll, right, I'll so I'll that. let you do this. Uh, best foreign language film, Um, I've seen Roma, Cold War, and Shoplifters. Very disappointed to see Burning was not in there. Um, Burning is excellent. Uh, never Look Away, you can't watch yet, unless you've got a screener for it. I didn't. And Capper, Nom, I've never even heard of. So here's my thing. I loved Cold War. I'm so happy I got a lot of nominations through this award, and we'll talk more about Cold War coming up. Shoplifters is very good, and Roma is, I mean, what other praise can we say about it? I'm going to say this, though. If Roma wins Best Picture, I would actually like to see Cold War Shoplifters take the Best Foreign Language Film. I know everyone's saying, oh, well, Roma has it, Roma has it. But here's the thing. Cold War actually got in... For a lot more nominations than I think a lot of other people thought it would. Um, again, we'll talk about that later. But I have a feeling Cold War actually might win Best Foreign Language Film. Yeah. With Roma coming in second. No the reason I'm saying this is because I think Roma is one of the front runners for Best Picture. Yeah. And I the other agree. and the dark horse for this race is either Shoplifters or Never Look Away. Um, from the buzz that you've heard, what do you agree or do you think Roma has? Yeah. I mean, I've been the the one film on this list that I've been waiting to see is Cold War, but I mean, I'm in Maine. It, it's, it's, I, I'll, it's, dude, dude, it came in the one theater out in Arizona, and then yeah, it'll go on yeah. Amazon soon. But um, so but but here's, uh, out of all of these, from what I've heard about Cold War, I completely agree with you. I think Cold War will probably win Best Foreign well, Language. Well, and that's film. why I'm going to say this: if Roma wins Best Foreign Language Film, it will not win Best Picture. Maybe I'm wrong by that, but I, I'm willing to. It's like a 98% chance if that happens, Roma will not win Best Picture. I think if it doesn't win Best Foreign Language Film, it wins Best Picture, hands down. Okay, sounds great. Um, best live action short film we can't talk about. I haven't seen any of these. Best documentary short subject haven't no. seen it. Best documentary feature. Okay. <sighs> Cody, talk you can talk. This. Cody, you can talk because I know this okay. is probably the one that you're more mad about. Uh, this is the one I am mad about. Uh, one thing is, I did see Free Solo. It's uh, I did too. Okay, that I am happy that Free Solo got in here. That's what I can say because Free Solo absolutely is a phenomenal documentary about uh, about somebody, an incredible individual who's doing something that or did something that really no one has ever done before. So that should be in there. The one bone I think you and I both have to pick with this is that I think we can both agree that Won't You Be My Neighbor was the best documentary to come out this year. 
or it at least it's should one be of them. It's one of them. It should have been nominated. I have no idea why it was not. Um, I was watching an interview with someone who said he knows Academy members, and he said they they go down by a list. And won't you be my neighbor? Was the last one on that list because it's alphabetical. Right. So they probably just forgot. They straight up just forgot. Of course they did. But yeah, I'm just. That's all I'm gonna say about it. A out of all of these, I can't speak about any of these because I haven't seen them. I'm guessing that RBG will probably have a good chance to win. But for me, since Won't You Be My Neighbor is not on here, I just hope Free Solo gets a good chance of winning. That's what I'm going to say. I tell everyone I've seen three films on here. Watch Mining the Gap. It's on Hulu. It's great. It's Hulu's first uh, Oscar nomination. It is excellent. That movie is. Um, okay. watch it. It's on Hulu. It's really good. Um, right. Now we're going to cinematography. Cold War. The favorite, never look away. Roma and a star is born. <clears throat> Where the fuck's first man? Good point. Where's first man? Where's I mean, Bill for... Street? Where's Bill Street? Okay, so here's the thing. The only one I, I can't talk about, never look away, but I know people who have seen it and they were even surprised to see that it got nominated too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd move we out. First, man. Yeah, geez, I'd move out. And never look away because I've heard the exact same thing as you that they thought the movie was good. They don't think it. The cinematography is all that special, so I would move out. And never look away. And a star is born because I've heard the cinematography in a Cold War is is just it kind of like Roma to where it's really phenomenal. And I would put in Beale Street, and there was First Man. Beale Street and First Man should absolutely be in there, but they're not. So if we're going to talk about what's in here, I absolutely, this is my pick, and I absolutely think Roma is going to be the one to sweep this award away with Roma in first, and then I would have the favorite in second, and then uh, Dark Horse would be, would be Cold War. Okay, so... Roma's number one, second is Cold War, the Dark Horse, the favorite. Cold War, in my opinion, has the second best cinematography of the year. It, okay. It is. There is one scene that is so smart in this movie uh, that before the lovers are even interacting, you can. there's a part where the guy is leaning against a mirror, and he's just talking to someone right next to him. And if you look in the mirror, you can actually see the main lead actress staring at him. It's so subtle, but you can tell that they're staring at each other. And it it's the best shot. That is the shot that probably got them the nomination. It is a excellent shot. I'm not even joking when I said it. It is one of the best shots I've ever seen. Okay. So smart. Um, and they do multiple things throughout the whole movie like that. And to be honest, I'm surprised that lead actress from that movie or didn't get best supporting actress. She was really, she was really good. She was really good in it. Um, but now we're moving on to the best original screenplay. Do you want to read these ones? Sure. So the nominations for best original screenplay are the favorite first reformed green book Roma and vice. Now I can't speak about first reform cause I haven't seen it. Zach has, but it didn't come out to my area. But my uh, my choice for winning this, this is a really hard one. But for me, I think the favorite is is my personal choice for winning this. What I think is going to win, though, is Roma. Either Roma or Vice is in my first spot for what I think the Academy will pick. My personal choice, though, would be the favorite to win if I was running the Oscars. But... If I'm going to have an order, I would go Roma, Vice, and then the favorite is my Dark Horse. My Dark Horse is Green Book. I think, dude, Green Book, we'll get to our front runners, but I think that's a front runner for, to win Best Picture. Um, even if people don't want it to, I, I still think it will. Um, so I think Green Book is a Dark Horse. I think Roma or Vice are the front runners right now. Um, yeah. So, and I'll put it there. And I think even First Reformed is a very dark horse that could easily come and win. Films that are missing from Best Original Screenplay. Leave No Trace. Eighth Grade. Nothing else there. A Quiet Place. Yes. Um, I would have moved out. Personally, I would have moved out Green Book. I would have moved out First Reformed to get at least Eighth Grade or A Quiet Place in there. So Yeah. Um, adapted Screenplay. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Joel Cohen, and Ethan Cohen. That's actually a big surprise. I did not think they were going to get in for that. Black no. Klansman. Can you ever forgive me if Bill Street could talk in A Star is Born? 
I think the winner here is Black Klansman or if Beale Street could talk. What about you? Yeah, I I agree with you. With a Dark Horse going to Can You Ever Forgive Me? That is seriously one of the best films. It's on digital now, so go check it out. It's excellent. It is amazing. That film should have so many more awards. I mean, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, I'm still not 100% sure about whether it should have been nominated Would you or move not. something else in there? Uh, I guess for the sake of argument, no, I guess I couldn't. But I mean, I just thought that the let's face it, up until fall this year when it came to movies was just fine. <laughs> That's really? it. I, nah, uh... Besides the there, indie films, take yeah. out all the indie films that we had in the summer. Yeah, that's true. Um, I going back to original screenplay, a film that is not in there real fast is American Animals. I don't think you've seen it yet, have you? N- no. You need to watch it. You would, Cody. You would love that movie. Love that movie. Okay. Um, animated short can't talk about. I've only seen Bow. I'm pretty sure you're the same way. Yeah. Animated feature. They didn't fuck this category up. Yeah. Every fuck. film in here deserves it. There's no Boss Baby this year. <laughs> I still think right. they nominated Boss Baby. Um, the nominees are The Incredibles 2, Isle of Dogs, Mira, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. So I'm going to say this. The clear one I want to win is Spider-Man. But <laughs> I think you're the same way, right? Yeah. But... I think Spider-Man, as much as I want it to win, and I still think it is a front runner. The dark horse for this race is Isle of Dogs. Yeah. Isle of Dogs do not count that film out of winning. Yeah. With Incredibles 2, I think both those are dark horses. Everyone's thinking Spider-Man's going to win. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, like, I, I mean, the year that Brave won, Regan Ralph should have won. Come on. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think we're in the exact same boat when it when it comes to this. Yeah. All right, let's let's move director. on to you want to all talk right. about director now. Director. Oh gosh dang it. The director nominations are Spike Lee for Black Klansman. Powell uh Powell Powell Pawlowski. Palakowski for Cold War. Yargos Lanthimos for The Favorite, Alfonso Coron for Roma, and Adam McKay for Vice. Okay, now, there are two, there are, there is one person that we both agree is probably the biggest snub of this entire award sneeze season, and that is Bradley Cooper. I would have completely removed Vice and put Bradley Cooper in for a star as I well. forgot, did you like Vice? I thought it was a good movie. The direction I thought was fine, though. I didn't think the direction was the best part of it. Bradley Cooper, I would I would get rid of Vice and put Bradley Cooper in for A Star is Born. Another person that I'm disappointed didn't get in, though. I mean, if Bradley Cooper was in there, I would understand why, isn't, why Bo Burnham isn't in there for eighth grade. But Bradley Cooper, man. Um, so Spike Lee, I'm really happy got in. First director nomination ever. Awesome. Awesome job. Powell Pawskalowski again. Again, Cold War has some love for there. Um, I didn't expect him to get in there. That was a nice surprise, and he did a really good job. Yargos Lanthimos, finally. I think he deserved it. Alfonso Cuaron, Roma, uh, and Adam McKay, Vice. Again, I liked Vice, but I didn't think it deserved nomination. I am no. with you. Bradley Cooper was the big snub. Another snub, though, is the director of Can You Ever Forgive Me? She is a. It's a female. There's no female directors in here. And yeah, unlike... Me, that's an issue. The director, Maria Heller... Deserved to be nominated. I'm sorry, but she really did. I would have even taken out uh, Powell for that. I, I if uh, what I was think it? there's people missing. Beale, uh, Barry Jenkins for Beale um, Street. Yeah, yeah Deborah Brannick for Leave No Trace. I mean, I get some of these films are smaller, but I once again, Bo can Brown. I argue something? I don't think. Like, I would argue that those films. If they had better marketing, because Cold War had a lot of good for your consideration marketing, but still, yeah. it, it's just come on now, really. Um, I'm mostly shocked that Bradley Cooper did not get in. Yeah, I mean, you look at all of the marketing and pushing that they were doing for A Star Is Born for the Academy. It's kind of a shock that he didn't get in, with how much they were pushing for it. I, it's kind of like the Ben Affleck thing with Argo. Um, I mean. Once again, I'm just, 
I'm also de- I know that they did they barely did any kind of marketing for for eighth grade, but I really was- marketing sucks. For like, yeah, it does. Uh, I because so. there I mean there are two there are two directors that I also would have loved to have good enough marketing to get in here, and that's Ari Aster for Hereditary and Bo Burnham for eighth grade. But you're right, A24 when it comes to their marketing, it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> it's just no. not. Well, let's now talk about supporting actress. The nominees are Amy Adams, Vice, Marina D. Tavira, Roma, Regina King, Emma Stone, Rachel Weiss. I have no complaints in this category. I'm actually yeah, really no. happy Marina D. Tavira got in. Uh, that was a very big surprise. Um, the clear winner of this will be Regina King. She's won every other award. But yeah. I think Marina has a chance of winning, and the dark horse being Rachel Weiss. Okay, I'm I'm with you there. I would say the dark horse for me would be Emma Stone. Really? You see, yeah. and I'm and I see I actually would, would clearly actually would rather have Emma Stone win, but I don't think she will. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Um supporting actor, you want to talk about them? Yeah, our supporting actors are Mahershala Ali for Green Book, Adam Driver for Black Klansman, Sam Elliott for A Star Is Born. Richard E. Grant for Can You Ever Forgive Me? And then Sam Rockwell for Vice. Hey, Oscars, how the fuck did you nominate Sam Rockwell for eating a chicken finger over <laughs> Timothy Chalamet? Just saying. Just that's, saying. That's a good point. That's a really um, good point. And if you ask me, honestly, you take Sam Rockwell. If we were going to nominate people that were in Vice for Best Supporting Actor... I Steve would have Carell. preferred Steve. Yeah, exactly. Yep, absolutely. I would have he preferred was 10 Steve. times better. 10 times better. Um, yeah, no, I, that's really the only complaint I have with this. Uh, everyone else is great. Adam Driver, really happy to see you finally get some love from the Academy. I mean, Sam Elliott. Yeah. That's Oscar nomination ever. Sure. Did you see what he said in his interview? What did he say? It's about fucking time. <laughs> um, personally, the winner will be Ollie. Yeah. Absolutely. The dark horse will be Sam Elliott. Actually, no, the dark horse I think is Richard E. Grant and the second place is Sam Elliott. But I don't think Ollie should win. I think he's good. But I personally would give it to Sam Elliott or Richard E. Grant. I can't say anything about Richard E. Grant because I haven't seen Can You Ever Forgive Me because it didn't – it wasn't released on like any kind of service around me, yeah. and it just never came Which out. Stuff, but, so. uh, but I would prefer to have Sam Elliott win over Mahershala Ali. Yeah, like again, Ali was good in Green Book, but I thought he was better in Moonlight. Like he got more material in Green Book, but yeah. Lead actress, lead it off, Cody. Oh wait a second, did we discuss who we think is gonna win for for best director? I think it's gonna be uh, like it. Yeah, yeah, go back. Uh, Karan. I. Uh, yeah, Alfonso. It's gonna be like the Golden Globes. Yeah, He's gonna yeah, win best that's director. Why I think I kind of just glared over it because it's fucking. <laughs> we did. We're gonna win. Uh, lead actress, Cody. All right, lead actress. We ha- our nominations are Yalitz Aparicio for Roma, Glenn Close for The Wife, and for anybody who's going to complain about that, you didn't see the movie. Yeah, and the, here's now, my thing. Talk crap about the movie. I'll get it. The performance, though, you can't say shit about. <laughs> yeah. saying. Olivia Coleman for the favorite Lady Gaga for a star is born in Melissa C- McCarthy for can you ever forgive me now when it comes to this category I think when it comes to the Academy I think that is going to be Glenn Close and when it comes to my personal choice it's torn up between two because do I want Lady Gaga to win yes but do I also want Glenn Close to win absolutely if either one of those actresses win I'm perfectly happy with it. But if we're going to have a list, uh, for me, it goes Glenn Close, Lady Gaga, and then from everything that I've heard, uh, Melissa McCarthy would be the dark horse for that. So Glenn Close wins it, hands down, with Lady Gaga being second and the dark horse being Olivia Coleman. She's won every other award. But if I were to personally pick this award, I would give it to Melissa McCarthy. Okay. I, or or Lady Gaga. Um, I love Glenn Close's performance in The Wife. The reason I don't think Lady Gaga will win this is because she's gonna get the nominee. She's gonna get the win for Shallows. She'll she'll have an Oscar. 
Um, Yelit, I think. I honestly, here's the thing. I'd be happy with any of these lead actresses winning. I really yeah. would. I would not complain at all. Maybe I would have a little temp. I, I think Olivia Coleman's good in the favor. I do not think she's great. I think Emma Stone and Rachel Weiss are the big standouts of the favorite personally. But again, she's really good in it. I would not complain if any of these actresses won. I think they're all worthy of the nomination. And this is the one where I'm curious to see what wins, but I think Glenn Close has it. And yeah. if we're talking about what got snubbed, where the fuck is Tony Collette? Yes. Here's the thing. Where I know Where is Tony Collette? We all knew she wasn't gonna get nominated, but tell me, when they were listing off the noms, we were all sitting there being come on, surprise us. Surprise. Tony Collette. It's kind of like yeah. supporting actress, uh, no Claire Foy either. Um, so I, I would have moved Amy Adams out and put Claire Foy in, but seriously. I mean, when it comes Frank to all these actresses... And do you know what, though? There was news saying that a lot of Academy members did not watch Hereditary because of how scary it was. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but, like, you're in the industry. Watch the fucking movie. You know, and out of all of these, if I was going to remove anybody from this list, as much as I love the movie, I would probably remove Yelitz Aparicio. I know a bunch of people are really? probably going to... I wouldn't. I would move out Olivia Coleman. Really? Mm -hmm. Just because Yelitz, I, I loved what Roma represented, and I think she played it in a very subtle way and never being an actress. Um, Here's the thing, though. I, I see all four of these ladies... I don't ever see Yelitz ever getting a nomination again. That's just me being personally honest. Yeah, um, there's some, there's like, it's the, it's like, um, it kind of reminds me when Captain Phillips, the, uh, I don't remember his name, but the supporting actor got nominated for that. What he is, never got yeah, nominated again. Yeah, what's he in now? I think he's been in a Blade Runner short film. And... He was in uh, Blade Runner 2049. Well, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's it. Like he hasn't been in much and I wish he was, he was really good in Captain Phillips. But that's kind of where I get nervous saying these, and I'm glad Yelitz got the one nomination. Um, but let's move on to lead actor. Uh, Christian Bale, Bradley Cooper, Willem Dafoe, Remy Malek, Viggo Mortensen. No complaints. None. Except uh, I did at Eternity's Gate. Who has actually seen the movie? I have. You have? Mm -hmm. I have the screener. I, I, you're lucky. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. Uh, one thing I will say, though, I would have rather had John David Washington in here. Um, I would have taken Willem Dafoe or Vigo out for him. Yep. And you know what? This is such a darn shame because he wasn't nominated for Best Director. But hands down for me, I still don't think that Bradley Cooper is going to win this. Um, I, Dude. It's I, between Rami. We're talking about. I think he's the dark horse to win. I yeah. really think he's the dark horse to win. I think Christian Bale's the front runner with Remy Malik coming in second, but I think Bradley Cooper's the dark horse. He didn't get that damn Oscar now, but you know for a fact he's gonna get some win out of a Star is born. He he yeah. has to. I, I would be utterly shocked if he didn't. Um another one, do not I honestly don't count on anyone in any of these categories can win. And I think lead actor is one of those that any of those actors can win. Even Willem yeah. Dafoe. Even Willem Dafoe. Um even Vigo Mortensen. Try, don't count it out. Do not count it out. Um, really, is there anyone else missing though that you would have put in? Ah, uh, I can't really think of anybody. Um, but yeah, John David Washington is one I certainly would have put in. But other than that, no. For for me though, I still have Rami Malek on being on top. It's between him and Christian Bale. It, I mean, I'm pretty sure that when it comes to them, they're both kind of tied at this point. And now let's get into the category that I think we are the most uh, going to be controversial. Yeah, you can about. name the first four. I'll talk about the next four. Or er, oh. name the first four. I'll name the next four. Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, and The Favorite. And from me, it is Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody should not be in this list. It no. just shouldn't. Here, I, I posted this on Twitter a couple days ago. I loved Bohemian Rhapsody for the energy and the celebration of Queen. As a film, it is not a very well-made film. It's very, like, cast and crew, production, technical stuff, awesome. Performances, great. The directing, and I'm not just saying this because the allegations against Brian Singer. 
it's pretty lacking. Like it's it's very much lacking. This yeah. film is led by Remy Malik, and if it wasn't for Remy Malik, this film would be getting utterly no nominations. I would that he's the only reason this film has any nominations. I'm being a hundred percent honest. I completely agree because you know what? It feels like it feels like the people who created this movie. It feels like they walked into the studio and they're like, "Hey, I got a movie idea for you guys," and they're like, "Oh, guess what? My movie idea is literally every other musical biopic out there except about Queen." What would you have switched in? What best pictures? Like actual, not hereditary, but I mean no, like no, 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 actual no, no, no. things. Um, no actual things. For if I would have switched out Bohemian Rhapsody, I would have easily. Taking out the fact that A24's marketing sucks, I would have put eighth grade in. So I'm just, um so I, I get it. I here's my thing. When Best Picture I think this is an issue with the nominations in general. When you have a chance of getting ten noms, why not just do the ten noms? It makes no sense to not do the ten. You, you know what I mean? Like if you can do ten, just do the ten. I know it's statistics and probability and calculation, but just do fucking ten. It's not hard. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, like, cause I think, um, what else? Uh, first man, I think first man deserved a nomination. Sorry. I think Bill street deserved a fucking nomination. Hands down deserved a nomination. You could have taken Bohemian Rhapsody out and put first man or Bill street. And I would have been happy. Um, I, here's the thing. And this is also, I think we've all talked about this. The fact that Mad Max Fury Road got nominated a few years ago, Mission it's Impossible cool. Fallout could have easily been nominated this year. I'm with you. Um, Here's the thing, Vice. I don't really have an issue with it being nominated. I would, do I think it deserves one? Yeah, I loved it, but I don't know if I would have put it in here. Stars Born. Yeah, Roma. Absolutely. Yeah. Green Book. I want it in there. I'm sorry. I literally I understand. Like, it may be not be the best Oscar film, one of the best made films of the year, but as a is a film that warmed my heart. It, it fucking warmed my heart. And I think that's what Academy members are going off of. I mean, even if you look at Bohemian Rhapsody, that is kind of the reasons why that film got nominated is because of the energy that it carried. And again, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get the controversies of, of Green Book, but it just worked for me. And I'm glad to see it in there. The favorite, really happy it got in there. Black Klansman, absolutely happy it got in there. Very happy for Spike Lee. And Black Panther, Whatever people will say about the social justice warriors and that it only got in for that, and that's why the Oscars nominated it. Here's no. the thing. I get it. I don't think it's the best Marvel film. But as a cultural, significant superhero film and what it's done for the genre, it deserved the nomination for that. I mean, it's the first... What I and honestly, here's the thing. I think Black Panther's... People talk about it being overrated. It's underrated. People crap on that film. and it, Watch the film again. Because I think people watched it after all the hype, or once all the hype, because they that film I saw like three weeks early. The hype was building up for it. It is, I get it. The CGI is not the best, but the culture, the story, it is beautiful in there. It is, and here's the thing: you're right. The significance of it. I mean, when's the last time that we've actually heard of a comic book movie, a comic book superhero movie being nominated for best picture? We well, all agree. Never. Well, here's the, we all agreed in, in two th or the Oscars last year, Logan should have been nominated for best picture. Hands well, and down. I, yep. And I agree. And that's my thing. I'm glad Logan got the adaptive screenplay nomination. That's pretty fucking big. Yeah. Um, and I get it. People will always go about, well, the Dark Knight should have been the first one to win it. You're getting nominated. Here's the fucking thing. At that point in time, there was only five nominations. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to tell you something right now. The year the Dark Knight came out, I'm going to read you guys the best picture nominations. We're going to decide what should have been taken out. The Dark Knight should have been we're, we're, Yeah, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to talk about it. Um, Literally here. So, 2008, right? 2000, 2009 best Oscar pictures. Where the fuck is these awards? Um, okay. Okay, actually, you never what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it was Slumdog Millionaire. I wouldn't have taken that out. The Reader, Frost Nixon, Milk, and The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. But remember, that's only when it had five nominations. What would yeah, we have still, put three in? of those films were not the best, and I would have taken three of those fucking out. <laughs> the Dark Knight. Um... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. But again, this year wasn't the best for film either. No, so, it wasn't. Um, 
I keep Black Panther in there. I, I like Avengers more, but I think Black Panther significantly did something more for the genre. Absolutely. Um, and you might disagree. That's fine. You might think it's for the social justice warriors. That's fine. I don't. All right. I don't care. I'm glad it got in. I'm glad comic book films are represented. Let's just be proud. Because maybe the next time, say, Avengers Endgame could get nominated. True. And here's another thing everyone needs to remember. It's called marketing. Disney pushed the fuck out of Black Panther. Yeah. They didn't push Avengers. No, I guarantee if didn't. Disney wanted Avengers to be nominated for Best Picture, it probably could have been. Here's Okay, and here's a little lesson for everybody who's listening to this podcast. The fact of the matter is... Look, you can have all the movies that you love in the world. And yes, Eighth Grade should have probably been in there. A Quiet Place should have probably been in there. Heck, Paddington 2 should have probably been in there. Paddington but 2 was snubbed. Paddington 2 <laughs> hosting the Oscars. But, but what you guys need to realize is that when it comes to these award seasons, particularly the Oscars, they run them like political campaigns. Mm -hmm. That's how these are put together. The people with the best marketing, the people who with the best speakers, the people who with the best campaign runners are the people who have their films nominated at these award shows, particularly the Oscars. And these films are the ones that had the best marketing. Look, we can say, yes, films are snubbed. We're unhappy about it, but that's not really on us. That's on the marketing team. They just didn't do enough. Except for Bradley Cooper when it comes to his directing in A Star is Born. Because that's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, as far as what we think is going to win, for me personally, I think the run for who is going to win Best Picture is between A Star is Born and Roma. And I think the Dark Horse, as much as... as no, much I don't as, think A Star is Born. I don't think A Star is Born. As much as I hate to say it, I think the Dark Horse of this whole award season is going to be Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't yeah. disagree with you, but I, I have to say this. I don't think A Star is Born wins Best Picture, man. I think yeah. Green Book is the front runner right now. I think Green really? Book hands down the front runner. W Even if people don't want to hear that, it's won yeah. a ton of awards for Best Picture. It's uh, It won the PGA. That's a, that's a big one. I can understand that. But I think Roma has the big chances, too. With the Dark Horse being... Bohemian Rhapsody, or the favorite. So if we're gonna say and don't count out Black Panther, just no, say. no, absolutely not. I uh, mean, if we're gonna see what if we were to say what three films are tied, it's Green Book, Roma, and The Star Is Born. Uh, I think it's Green Book, Roma, and uh, either the favorite or Black Panther. I. It really it comes down to Green Book or Roma. If one of those two don't win, I'll I'll probably poop my pants from sitting there watching. But I one of them two are it's gonna be an interesting. This is one of the first years that there isn't a front runner, but just like last year when Shape of Water won, I swear to god three billboards was gonna win. I never thought in a million years Shape of Water. Personally, that was my personal pick. I'm glad Shape of Water won. Didn't think it would have won though. Did, what do you Shape, think? did Shape of Water win? Because yeah, I thought won. No, it won. It was big. It was big. It won. Because it's the third year in a row that a Mexican director has won Best Picture and Best Director or something like that. Give me one second. What are you going to look at? It is Shape of Water. You want to bet money? I'll bet you $10 that it is Shape of Water. Look, I, I got the Oscar. Now. Okay, never mind. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So, but overall, Best Picture, it is missing quite a lot of films. Uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Another one that would have gone in there. Um. And again, it just comes down to marketing. Um, this is going to be an interesting... Again, there's only a couple locks. Uh, cinematography, I think, is a lock. Director is a lock. Best Supporting Actress is a lock. Supporting Actor is a lock. I think cinematography... Wait, did you say yeah, cinematography? I said, yeah, I said cinematography. Okay, yeah. It's all fun. Um, I think... Yeah, and pretty much that's where it comes down to. Um, those are really the only locks. I, I don't love the Oscars. Like, I... I I love seeing what gets nominated, and I love seeing what's winning. I don't actually watch the awards, though, to be honest. I never do. I don't care to. I just play Kingdom Hearts and then play <laughs> a couple minutes. Um, there, hey, yeah. guess what? what? You know what? what? I'm going on a delay for the next two months because I'm going to be in comatose playing Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> no, here's the thing. is The fact is the Oscars, they make a lot of mistakes. 
Mm-hmm. But there is something coming out in about a month that we might be putting together right now. Yes. Um, so if you guys do not know, we have our own award show that is better than the Oscars and Golden Globes. And by, until the 31st, you can actually vote on it. Right, Cody? Yep, you can vote on it up until the 31st at 6 a.m. in the morning. Yep. Uh, that's Eastern After Standard that, Time. Cody's so. taking it down, and we're starting everything else. Yeah, we are. But so, guys, if you don't know what this is, this is the second annual Sweet Film Awards. Yes, and we're really excited to be doing this again. Last year was a great success, so we want you guys to go vote. Go vote. If you're watching this, if you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button so you guys are stay tuned on this channel. And if you're listening to us, then yeah, come to the YouTube channel. Come vote when you get time. We'd love to have you be a participant. I think we've had, what, 95 people vote so far, and we want more. Yeah. We want more, and we'd love to have it. Um, but guys, that's really where the end of this podcast goes. This is going to be an interesting season. Um, again, me and Cody will do another one last segment of the Oscars talking about what the winners are after that date. And uh, yeah, and then we'll kind of just get back to our normal sweet podcast discussing different things, um, going back to a different show and probably finally introducing the sweet film trivia. Absolutely. Um, so probably look out for that in March. I would say probably want to get back from South by Southwest. Yeah. Sounds so great. We'll probably around there. Um, so look out for that, guys. Um, we're going to end this podcast here, though, guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching this. We really do appreciate any all of you guys' viewers. And I, I saw the last one we just did actually got 600 views. So thank you guys again for tuning into the show. It means a ton. You guys are the best. I love you all. And Cody, where can they find you at? All right, guys, if you want to find me other than doing all the stuff here with Zach, and as a reminder, if you don't have time to listen to this podcast, head over to Podcast Republic, SoundCloud, and iTunes to find some free time and listen to it over there. But go to YouTube, search Cody Curtis, should be the first thing that pops up. My icon should be, I'm holding a lightsaber, it's really... Yeah, okay, and then if you want to find me on social media, just search underscore Cody, underscore Curtis on pretty much any social media you can imagine, and you should be able to find me. Absolutely. You guys hit that like and subscribe button. That's where you'll find me over here. You can also find me over at Sandwich on Films. Thank you guys again so much for watching this. You guys are seriously all the best. Can't wait to talk with you guys after I'm done with you in March. Thanks again. Have a great day.